So we've come to Deloraine hoping to find the radiation monitoring post that was located here, and all our archival sources tell us that it was in the Federal Building. Well, that suggests to me one of two things, either the RCMP headquarters or the post office. Our local sources tell us that the RCMP office wasn't built until 1964. That's too late. So therefore, it sounds like the best option is going to be the post office. This magnificent building that was built in 1930 seems like the most likely candidate to have that radiation monitoring post. I'm Gordon Goldsboro, president of the Manitoba Historical Society, radio and newspaper columnist, and author of books on the neglected, the overlooked, the hidden places from Manitoba's past. In the 1950s and 1960s, Many worried that the United States and the Soviet Union would go to war and launch nuclear weapons at each other. This sobering possibility led the Canadian government to develop a countrywide network to monitor radiation levels after a nuclear detonation. Plans were developed to construct 2,000 fallout reporting posts. 200 of these posts were to be built in Manitoba. One of the really exciting things is that the postal uh, employee here, Teresa, actually has a copy of blueprints for the building. And uh, what we can see looking at it is that the, from the entrance here, we go into a small vestibule that leads into the rest of the post office, but there's also a hallway leading down here to the stairwell, which goes down into the basement. And of course, that's where we expect this structure to be. What's kind of unusual, though, is that the blueprints don't include uh, any plan for the basement. Uh, and that's too bad, because you know, it would have been nice to see kind of wh what, where it might have been arranged. But the unusual thing is that uh, it, we don't expect there to be the, the structure in these blueprints, because this building was built in 1930, you know, fully 30 years before the thing we're looking for was built. So yeah, we don't expect to see anything there. But what she did find was a more recent record, which does include a plan of the basement, and it also includes over here in the corner, the thing we're looking for, the, the, the structure. And uh, so that's exciting. So we're gonna go down the basement stairs, we're gonna walk across and see what is in this corner. Exploring is my passion and the foundation of this series. It's important to document what I find, so I bring my camera along. This is pretty much what I was expecting. It's uh, a little different than the others I've seen, but I guess they had a number of sort of variations on the basic plan. The idea was that it would be made out of cinder blocks, which of course was a very common construction medium in the 1960s. Different, of course, than the other walls in the basement here, which are made of bricks. The other thing that's really quite interesting is the, these, the ceiling is made of these sort of trapezoidal pieces of concrete that were meant to sort of slide together so there wouldn't be a vertical space between them. And the idea, of course, was to make them radiation proof. But what's a little surprising to me is that the, one of the cinder blocks of the wall is turned sideways so that the two spaces in it are actually exposed. And I really don't quite understand what that might have been intended to do. So we'll have to go inside and kind of see what that might have been. Now, what's a little interesting about this particular design is that it has a door. Uh, some of the designs I've seen actually just have sort of a curtain that would slid across here. But this one's a, a door, and of course it's made of wood, which is interesting, because wood wouldn't have been particularly good to keep out radiation. Also interesting is they've got a lock on the inside. So the idea then is once you've gotten inside, you lock yourself inside so that people outside couldn't get in. I come inside, and the first thing I see is the bunk bed. Now, this is a little different than some of the designs I've seen. Uh, some of them, they're actually the full down from the wall. Uh, some of them sort of are held by a chain, but this one looks like it's actually built into the structure of the, uh, of the shelter. Uh, two very solid platforms, presumably for two people, although, to be honest with you, the space is pretty small, and I'm not so sure I would have imagined that two people could work in here. Many of them have this. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, basically, it's a fume hood, uh, and when I first thought of that, what, what would this be for? Because I envisioned that people in the shelter would be eating sort of, you know, dried foods, you know, uh, things that wouldn't have to be prepared. 
But apparently, according to the drawings I've seen at the National Archives, they actually intended people to cook in here. So they would have a little table sitting here underneath the hood. Uh, they would have make a hot plate maybe or, or a range top on top of it, and they would cook and the fumes would go out into the basement. Now there wasn't any other way for the fumes to leave the basement, so it would have probably gotten kind of smelly out there, but they would actually cook meals in here. Uh, of course, the shelving unit here would be where they'd keep all of their various supplies, probably their food, you know, their other materials. And I think probably somewhere in here is where they would have done their radiation measurements. Because, of course, ultimately that's what they had to do. They had to take measurements of the radiation levels outside the building. So there would have had to be something connecting this with the outside. Oh, there it is, right there. There's, there's, a, there's a pipe here. I suspect we'll have to go outside and see, but... I think this probably goes outside and what they would have done is they would have slid their sensor up this pipe outside of the building and then they would have, the cable would have come inside here connected to a meter and then that would have been what they would have spent much of their time in here doing. Watching that meter maybe every half an hour, maybe every hour, they would have taken a radiation measurement and then they would have sent that to the central area, the central sort of command post that would have taken all the readings from all of these various uh, reporting posts and put it on a map so that they could work out where were the levels of radiation the highest. The thing that still surprises me about this little structure is that they've obviously made provision for people to be in here for quite a long period of time. You know, they've got the range hood for them to do their cooking. They've got the shelving unit for them to store their supplies. They've got a bed for them to sleep. Where did they go to the toilet? Well, that's where we come back to this little space through the wall here, because I was surprised by that. You know, why would they have a hole if they're trying to keep out levels of radiation? I think what might have been the case is they may have had a toilet sitting right where I'm standing now. Maybe it was one of those, you know, chemical toilets that had a, sort of had a vent stack, and the vent stack went out that space. That's my guess, because they would have had to have some means for the people here to, you know, do their business. I think we found our radiation sensor port right here. This thing is probably connected to that pipe that we saw inside. And of course the cap would have been taken off. They would have slid the sensor out and this is where they would have taken the radiation measurements. What's also interesting though, you can see the remains of an original window from the 1930 building. And of course you wouldn't want to have a window into a radiation uh, protective structure. So they would have blocked that up with cinder blocks, completely filled it up other than just for this one pipe for that uh, radiation sensor. My archival research indicates there were two basic types of FRP. Where there was a suitable building with a basement in which an FRP made of cinder blocks could be built, that was the preferred configuration. In rural areas, however, where there were no suitable buildings with basements available, a second type of FRP, a prefabricated cylinder, was buried in the ground. The hunt for one of these FRPs takes us to the Whiteshell Provincial Park in southeastern Manitoba, where my research indicates one of them may still exist. So I was trying to find some of the fallout reporting posts that were supposed to be buried in the ground, and we were told that there was one in this vicinity. The reason it was, it was here, it was near a forestry office operated by the provincial government, and it appears these are the remains of that forestry office. So there must be somewhere in this vicinity one of these underground structures. I have managed to get a key for the access hatch to the FRP and have been given rough coordinates for its location. I think I may be close. You know, there's things here that I recognize, things that are similar to the structure we found in the basement of the Deloraine Post Office. We see, for example, beds for two people. So I presume that it was intended to be staffed by two people. Uh, likewise, we find a shelving unit that would probably have been where they'd store their emergency rations, where they would store their water supply and whatever other supplies they would need. But there are some differences. 
So for example, we find this structure mounted to the wall and it's connected by means of this pipe going outside and I think this is connected to a stack that we see outside. And what I suspect this is, I don't know for sure, is some kind of device for sampling the air outside of the structure. Because of course the whole point of it was to detect radiation in the vicinity. So I'm guessing what they would have done is they would have taken this handle and mounted it somewhere here and they would have turned a crank and would have sucked air in from the pipe and they would have had some kind of radiation measuring device here that would have measured their latent levels of radiation. What confuses me a little bit though is that you know, they would then be bringing irradiated air into a space that was meant to protect the people inside. So I'm not really clear on what that sort of purpose was. The other thing that's a little surprising is that uh, there's no toilet in here. Just like the one in Deloraine, there's really no explicit place for a toilet. Uh, maybe they'd have one sitting here in the corner, some small little chemical toilet, and maybe with a stack out. There is a pipe here that would have probably you know, exhausted to the outside, um, but they would have had to have something because you know, people in here would be expected to stay for, well, days or, or maybe weeks, maybe even months. And of course, you have to have some kind of facility for that. But otherwise, you know, it's, it's pretty similar in its overall features. One notable difference, though, is the construction material. Whereas the one in Deloraine was made from those cinder blocks filled with mortar, so that would give them sort of the protection from radiation, here it's all steel. And in fact, you know, the reverberation, the, the sound of my voice ricocheting off the walls in here tells you, of course, what it's made of. And that doesn't provide very much protection against radiation. So I think the way they would have designed this is they, the ground here is very shallow. The soil is just inches deep. So they would have scraped that away to expose the granite rock underneath. They would have created a shallow depression that they would have laid this structure into. And then they would have covered it over with a big mound of soil. And the soil, therefore, is what provides the protection from radiation for the people inside. So it's a, it's a different concept but it achieves the same result as what we saw in Deloraine, to protect the people inside while they were making measurements of the radiation levels in the air around this area. What's interesting is that there are three ports here right at the top of the access hatch that are probably where the services would have come in. Of course, they would have needed electricity down below to run the instruments, probably to provide lights, maybe even heat to cook their meals. And so they would have had either banks of batteries or possibly a generator sitting outside and they would have brought the cables from those sources of power down in through these conduits down into the structure below. It is incredibly important that we keep structures like this old FRP secure. I hope in years to come we can find a way to have FRPs like this one made safe and accessible for people to learn about the rich history of a dark time in the 20th century. Yeah.